It is prayer time Amen. here at Victory Baptist and all over the world. Yes, Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, yes, again this morning we say thank you. thank you. Thank you for blessing us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for providing for us, Heavenly Father. Thank you for waking us up this morning, giving us the heart and the desire to give you praise continuously. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our place of worship. We thank you for our leader, our pastor. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for everyone that is out here in your world trying to lead people to you, trying to get the understanding, Heavenly Father, trying to wake up those that are dead in the spirit, Heavenly Father. Lift us all up, Lord Jesus. Please touch our hearts and our minds. Touch the ill, Heavenly Father, those that are suffering from sickness, those that are suffering from other diseases, injuries, and harm, Heavenly Father. Just touch their bodies in a healing manner. Touch the doctors and nurses and everyone that's taking care of the sick, Heavenly Father. We lift each and every one of the caregivers up to you, Heavenly Father. Your holy name, your Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, just touch them. Touch each and every member of this church, Heavenly Father. Yes, sir. Those that try to make it out and those that are watching on the screens, Heavenly Father. Just bless them in your special way, Heavenly Father. Bless as you bless each and every one of us. And if we continue to lift up your name, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
trust in Jesus just to take him at his word and just to rest upon his promise just to know the saith the accepted Jesus Christ and became his disciples but the process could not stop there because Jesus had to teach them. This is why Sunday school and, and Bible study is so important for it is the, the branch of the church that's designed to take those who've accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior and then to teach them what thus said the Lord. We must be taught so the first century Christians did not see the instruction as a burden but as a delight. Mm. We need to know how to live the Christian life and then the Holy Spirit endows us and gives us the power and, and the mind to be receptive to the word of God and to the, the movement of the Holy Spirit and that's how we grow and glow in Christ. Yes. We need to read and study the word of God. If you want to remain a baby Christian, don't read. I'm not talking about the internet where somebody wrote, read the Bible. Let the Holy Ghost guide you and then subject yourself to instruction. Those who have dedicated their lives to scripture, to interpretation of scripture, and to a life of following the Lord. One must subject themselves. So the disciples had the benefit of Jesus. 
with instruction. We have the benefit of study with Holy Spirit guidance. So the Bible is a blessing for us, for, for, for we learn how we should be as Christians. The Holy, the Holy Spirit uh, prepares us to, to receive what thus saith the Lord. If, if, if there was no instruction, we would be like a ship without a what? Sail. We need the instruction. And if you really want to grow, and if you really want to glow, then you must study. You must subject yourself to instruction. There's too many Christians that are putting on. They, yes, we're not questioning the scripture. It's not questioning one's Christianity, but the putting on this. One can, if, you, if you're the same that you were spiritually 10 years ago, and there's been no growth, shame on you. From Job 38, the uh, first, uh, ch chapter 38, the first four uh, verses. Then the Lord spoke to Job. Right. Now that's not Job, y'all, that's Job. Out of the storm, he said, who is this that obscures my plan? You kind of undermine me disregarding or overlooking or shade my plans with words, but you have no knowledge. Since you have challenged me, brace yourself like a man. Uh, get your clothes tied tight like the wrestler. We're getting ready to rumble here. I will question you, and you shall answer me. You've been asking a lot of questions. Now is my time to, to respond, the Lord said. I want you to put your finger on that word, Lord, Yahweh. We're going to come back to that before we end. It's Yahweh, Yahweh. Uh, see, the Lord, that's, that's the title, but Yahweh is his name. Put your finger on that, we're gonna come back to it. And then uh, God says to Job, where were you? Mm -hmm. You have so many questions. You think, think you got some answers? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you understand. We're going to talk to you. We already almost finished this sermon. We're going to talk to you about where were you? Come on now. Where were you? Where were you? When I came upon this passage, verse 4, where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. I was puzzled and perplexed in reading this scripture in isolation. Where were you? So therefore, in order for Yahweh, or the name, the title, the Lord would ask Job this question, there must have been some response or some, some verbiage or some rhetoric that, that Job was saying prior to God asking him, well, where were you when I laid the foundation of this earth? Where were you? And, and God spoke out of the thunder, this, the, the loud noise, and, and, and the thunder of God spoke to Job. said, who is this who obscures my, my plan? You, you're questioning God's judgment and you're uh, over 
looking, the reality of, of who I am, and you are obscuring my, my plans. You, you're talking about some things that are outside of your range of understanding. Mm -hmm. When we go back to verse 20, to chapter 29, 30, and 31, we find that Job begins to question God regarding his malady. And those who have read Job remember that Job was very wealthy. He lost all of his wealth. Mm -hmm. uh, God let Satan kind of have his way to a point with Job. Uh, people respected Job. They would step uh, aside when Job would walk down the street. Job was kind to the widow. He was kind to the fatherless. He was kind to the motherless. He did all the things that a righteous person would do. He prayed. He, he loved God. He, he worshiped God. He was a righteous man according to the scripture. But then everything came loose. Started to fall apart on Job. Everything he had, he lost. Even down to his health. So there must be a reason, Job is saying. There must be a reason that my, my life is topsy turvy and, it, if, and it's beyond my understanding because I've done everything I should do, even down to the young women. Me being an old man, I didn't even look at them. I didn't lust them. I controlled my eyes. I controlled my emotions. And now I'm going through this. Why, Lord, why? Then we come to chapter 38 where God, the Lord, title, Yahweh, 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 responds. Don't ask a question that you're not ready to get an answer to. So God, ask the question, where were you? When, and he uses uh, uh, construction terminology. When I laid, when I built the earth foundation. When I marked off its dimensions, chapter five. Or, or what, what were its footing set? Or, or who laid its foundation while the morning stars sang Together and all the angels shouted for joy. That's verse 7, verse 8. Who shut up the sea behind the doors when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the cloud its garment and wrapped it in thick darkness. When I fixed limit for it. When all this happened, where were you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Job found himself in a pickle. When he's talking to Yahweh, Yahweh finds himself in a pickle in, a, in chapter, in, in the first, uh, I should say, the 40th chapter of Job. Somewhere around the first or second voice, the, the scripture says that after Job heard God, that he put his hand over his face. Mm -hmm. Because he realized that he was not there. He does not know how the earth was formed or laid the foundation there. So there's some things, Job, you must understand in life that you may not know. But you should know that God is real. You, the question is not answered in Job why good folks suffer. You can look from, I believe it's chapter 1 to chapter 42. There's, there, there's no passage that, that explains to us in, in detail why good suffer. All that we can be assured of when we read the book of Job is God has it all in his hands. 
and we are the created. God is the creator. Creator. Jesus the Christ. Now, I mentioned earlier that we would go back to that word Lord because the Jews had a problem with um, calling on God by name. They didn't call him Yahweh, mm -hmm. Yodhve. Uh, 7,000 times in scripture, he's referred to as God. But what is the, the nature of this God that we find in the scripture? Well, when you look at uh, the word Yahweh, uh, Yahweh most ancient writings say Yahweh some refer to it as Yahweh but actually it's, it's uh, Yahweh because you have the the Yod the Yod which is the first letter and that's Yod and then you have uh, in English the the H but in the Hebrew is hey. Yo means hand. Hey, the letter. I'm giving you a definition of the letter, pictographically. This is not the definition, but this is what the letter stands for. Remember last week we talked about the letters of the Hebrew language have meaning. The numbers attached to the letters and the actual letter. So, uh, yo, what that means is, is, is hand. And, and hey means behold. Mm -hmm. And vav, which looks like that, vav means hard nail or metal nail. And then the, the, last, the last letter is have or hey, and, and that means behold. So when you look at, at, at the words, at the words there, uh, uh, Brother Zerosh, you look at the letters, then you see the first letter, yo, hand, hey, behold, vav, nail, hey, behold. So when you translate and put it all together, we see behold the hands and behold the nail. Come on, hmm. Behold the hands and behold the nail prints. So when we, we look at that word from that perspective, that uh, Yahweh means behold the hands and behold the nails. We cannot help but see the messianic prophecy that this pictures Jesus on the cross, where the nails were in his hand. Y'all right, don't hear what I'm saying. Yes. Yeah. The nail All right. was in his hand. Yeah. Behold the nail. Yes. Mm. Behold the hand. Yeah. So Job, you have to understand that you may be going through something right now, but, but when we even mention the name of Yahweh, oh, no. then we are talking about the prophecy, the messianic prophecy to come, that one day Jesus will come and wipe away all of our tears. Jesus will come and redeem us from all of our problems. Jesus will come and make the crooked way straight. Come on now. All praise to the Lord. Yes, all praise to Yahweh. And then let me tell you something else. Yes, the, 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 uh, the, the title today was, Where Were You? But I have another question to ask you. Were you there? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they put him in a borrowed tomb? Were you there when he stayed in the grave all day Friday? Were you there when he stayed in the grave all day Saturday? Everybody thought everything was fine. But early, early Sunday, were you there when he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and earth in his hands? God bless you. Yahweh, God bless you. Yes, Yahweh. Yes, Ultimate 
redemption. Yes, sir. The hands and the nails. The cost will be paid on Calvary. Yes, the sir. cost will be paid yes. on Calvary. But it doesn't stop there. It says one of these days in Revelations, that same Yahweh will wipe away all tears from our eyes. I don't know about you, but sometimes the words pass my comprehension. I can't pick up the words through the vocabulary. Can't always find it in the dictionary. But all I can say is reach back to Lake Providence years ago and say, he's all right. 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 Bless his name. Yahweh. Come on now. He's all right. He's all right. Yeah. 